Hemophilia, Wikipedia Audio Hemophilia, also spelled hemophilia, is a mostly inherited genetic disorder that impairs the body's ability to make blood clots, a process needed to stop bleeding. This results in people bleeding longer after an injury, easy bruising, and an increased risk of bleeding inside joints or the brain. Those with a mild case of the disease may have symptoms only after an accident or during surgery. Bleeding into a joint can result in permanent damage while bleeding in the brain can result in long-term headaches, seizures, or a decreased level of consciousness. There are two main types of hemophilia, hemophilia A, which occurs due to not enough clotting factor 8, and hemophilia B, which occurs due to not enough clotting factor 9. They are typically inherited from one's parents through an X chromosome with a non-functional gene. Rarely a new mutation may occur during early development or hemophilia may develop later in life due to antibodies forming against a clotting factor. Other types include hemophilia C, which occurs due to not enough factor 11, and parahemophilia, which occurs due to not enough factor V. Acquired hemophilia is associated with cancers, autoimmune disorders, and pregnancy. Diagnosis is by testing the blood for its ability to clot and its levels of clotting factors. Prevention may occur by removing an egg, fertilizing it, and testing the embryo before transferring it to the uterus. Treatment is by replacing the missing blood clotting factors. This may be done on a regular basis or during bleeding episodes. Replacement may take place at home or in hospital. The clotting factors are made either from human blood or by recombinant methods. Up to 20% of people develop antibodies to the clotting factors which makes treatment more difficult. The medication Desmopressin may be used in those with mild hemophilia A studies of gene therapy are in early human trials. Signs and Symptoms Hemophilia A affects about 1 in 5,0010,000, while hemophilia B affects about 1 in 40,000, males at birth. As hemophilia A and B are X-linked recessive disorders females are very rarely severely affected. Some females with a non-functional gene on one of the X chromosomes may be mildly symptomatic. Hemophilia C occurs equally in both sexes and is mostly found in Ashkenazi Jews. In the 1800s hemophilia was common within the royal families of Europe. The difference between hemophilia A and B was determined in 1952. The word is from the Greek hyma alpha mu alpha meaning blood and philia phi iota lambda alpha meaning love. Characteristic symptoms vary with severity. In general symptoms are internal or external bleeding episodes, which are called bleeds. People with more severe hemophilia suffer more severe and more frequent bleeds, while people with mild hemophilia usually suffer more minor symptoms except after surgery or serious trauma. In cases of moderate hemophilia symptoms are variable which manifest along a spectrum between severe and mild forms. Deep internal bleeding, e.g. deep muscle bleeding, leading to swelling, numbness or pain of a limb, joint damage from hemarthrosis, potentially with severe pain, disfigurement and even destruction of the joint and development of debilitating arthritis. Transfusion transmitted infection from blood transfusions that are given as treatment, adverse reactions to clotting factor treatment, including the development of an immune inhibitor which renders factor replacement less effective. Intracranial hemorrhage is a serious medical emergency caused by the buildup of pressure inside the skull. It can cause disorientation, nausea, loss of consciousness brain damage, and death. In both hemophilia A and B, 
there is spontaneous bleeding but a normal bleeding time, normal prothrombin time, normal thrombin time, but prolonged partial thromboplastin time. Internal bleeding is common in people with severe hemophilia and some individuals with moderate hemophilia. The most characteristic type of internal bleed is a joint bleed where blood enters into the joint spaces. This is most common with severe hemophiliacs and can occur spontaneously. If not treated promptly, joint bleeds can lead to permanent joint damage and disfigurement. Bleeding into soft tissues such as muscles and subcutaneous tissues is less severe but can lead to damage and requires treatment. Children with mild to moderate hemophilia may not have any signs or symptoms at birth especially if they do not undergo circumcision. Their first symptoms are often frequent and large bruises and hematomas from frequent bumps and falls as they learn to walk. Swelling and bruising from bleeding in the joints, soft tissue, and muscles may also occur. Children with mild hemophilia may not have noticeable symptoms for many years. Often, the first sign in very mild hemophiliacs is heavy bleeding from a dental procedure, an accident, or surgery. Females who are carriers usually have enough clotting factors from their one normal gene to prevent serious bleeding problems, though some may present as mild hemophiliacs. Severe complications are much more common in cases of severe and moderate hemophilia. Complications may arise from the disease itself or from its treatment. Hemophilic arthropathy is characterized by chronic proliferative synovitis and cartilage destruction. If an intraarticular bleed is not drained early, it may cause apoptosis of chondrocytes and affect the synthesis of proteoglycans. The hypertrophied and fragile synovial lining while attempting to eliminate excessive blood may be more likely to easily re-bleed, leading to a vicious cycle of hemarthrosis synovitis hemarthrosis. In addition, iron deposition in the synovium may induce an inflammatory response activating the immune system and stimulating angiogenesis, resulting in cartilage and bone destruction. Females possess two X chromosomes, males have one X and one Y chromosome. Since the mutations causing the disease are X-linked recessive, a female carrying the defect on one of her X chromosomes may not be affected by it, as the equivalent allele on her other chromosome should express itself to produce the necessary clotting factors, due to X inactivation. However, the Y chromosome in the male has no gene for factors 8 or 9. If the genes responsible for production of factor 8 or factor 9 present on a male's X chromosome are deficient there is no equivalent on the Y chromosome to cancel it out, so the deficient gene is not masked and the disorder will develop. Chorionic villus sampling A small sample of the placenta is removed from the womb and tested for the hemophilia gene usually during weeks 11 to 14 of pregnancy, amniocentesis a sample of amniotic fluid is taken for testing, usually during weeks 15 to 20 of pregnancy. Since a male receives his single X chromosome from his mother, the son of a healthy female silently carrying the deficient gene will have a 50% chance of inheriting that gene from her and with it the disease and if his mother is affected with hemophilia, he will have a 100% chance of being a hemophiliac. In contrast, for a female to inherit the disease, she must receive two deficient X chromosomes, one from her mother and the other from her father. Hence hemophilia is far more common among males than females. However, it is possible for female carriers to become mild hemophiliacs due to lionization of the X chromosomes. Hemophiliac daughters are more common than they once were, as improved treatments for the disease have allowed more hemophiliac males to survive to adulthood and become parents.
Adult females may experience menorrhagia due to the bleeding tendency. The pattern of inheritance is criss-cross type. This type of pattern is also seen in color blindness. A mother who is a carrier has a 50% chance of passing the faulty X chromosome to her daughter, while an affected father will always pass on the affected gene to his daughters. A son cannot inherit the defective gene from his father. This is a recessive trait and can be passed on if cases are more severe with carrier. Genetic testing and genetic counseling is recommended for families with hemophilia. Prenatal testing, such as amniocentesis, is available to pregnant women who may be carriers of the condition. Complications As with all genetic disorders, it is of course also possible for a human to acquire it spontaneously through mutation, rather than inheriting it, because of a new mutation in one of their parents' gametes. Spontaneous mutations account for about 33% of all cases of hemophilia A. About 30% of cases of hemophilia B are the result of a spontaneous gene mutation. If a female gives birth to a hemophiliac son, either the female is a carrier for the blood disorder or the hemophilia was the result of a spontaneous mutation. Until modern direct DNA testing, However, it was impossible to determine if a female with only healthy children was a carrier or not. Generally, the more healthy sons she bore, the higher the probability that she was not a carrier. If a male is afflicted with the disease and has children with a female who is not even a carrier, his daughters will be carriers of hemophilia. His sons, however, will not be affected with the disease. The disease is X-linked and the father cannot pass hemophilia through the Y chromosome. Males with the disorder are then no more likely to pass on the gene to their children than carrier females, though all daughters they sire will be carriers and all sons they father will not have hemophilia. There are numerous different mutations which cause each type of hemophilia. Due to differences in changes to the genes involved, people with hemophilia often have some level of active clotting factor. Individuals with less than 1% active factor are classified as having severe hemophilia, those with 1-5% to active factor have moderate hemophilia, and those with mild hemophilia have between 5-40% to of normal levels of active clotting factor. Hemophilia can be diagnosed before, during or after birth if there is a family history of the condition. Several options are available to parents. If there is no family history of hemophilia, it is usually only diagnosed when a child begins to walk or crawl. They may experience joint bleeds or easy bruising. Mild hemophilia may only be discovered later usually after an injury or a dental or surgical procedure. Genetic testing and counseling are available to help determine the risk of passing the condition on to a child. This may involve testing a sample of tissue or blood to look for signs of the genetic mutation that causes hemophilia. Genetics Severity a pregnant woman with a history of hemophilia in her family can test for the hemophilia gene. Such tests include Diagnosis Before pregnancy During pregnancy After birth Classification There's a small risk of these procedures causing problems such as miscarriage or premature labor so the woman may discuss this with the doctor in charge of her care. If hemophilia is suspected after a child has been born, a blood test can usually confirm the diagnosis. Blood from the umbilical cord can be tested at birth if there's a family history of hemophilia. 
A blood test will also be able to identify whether a child has hemophilia A or B, and how severe it is. There are several types of hemophilia, hemophilia A, hemophilia B, hemophilia C, parahemophilia, and acquired hemophilia A. Management Hemophilia A is a recessive X-linked genetic disorder resulting in a deficiency of functional clotting factor 8. Hemophilia B is also a recessive X-linked genetic disorder involving a lack of functional clotting factor 9. Hemophilia C is an autosomal genetic disorder involving a lack of functional clotting factor 11. Hemophilia C is not completely recessive as heterozygous individuals also show increased bleeding. The type of hemophilia known as parahemophilia is a mild and rare form and is due to a deficiency in factor V. This type can be inherited or acquired. A non-genetic form of hemophilia is caused by autoantibodies against factor VIII and so is known as acquired hemophilia. A acquired hemophilia can be associated with cancers autoimmune disorders and following childbirth. There is no long-term cure. Treatment is by replacing the missing blood clotting factors. Clotting factors are usually not needed in mild hemophilia. In moderate hemophilia clotting factors are typically only needed when bleeding occurs or to prevent bleeding with certain events. In severe hemophilia preventive use is often recommended two or three times a week and may continue for life. Rapid treatment of bleeding episodes decreases damage to the body. Factor VIII is used in hemophilia A and Factor IX in hemophilia B. Factor replacement can be either isolated from human blood serum, recombinant, or a combination of the two. Some people develop antibodies against the replacement factors given to them, so the amount of the factor has to be increased or non-human replacement products must be given, such as porcine factor 8. If a person becomes refractory to replacement coagulation factor as a result of circulating inhibitors, this may be partially overcome with recombinant human factor 7. Clotting Factors In early 2008, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved anti-hemophilic factor, genetically engineered from the genes of Chinese hamster ovary cells. Since 1993 recombinant factor products tissue culture cells and involve little, if any human plasma products have been available and have been widely used in wealthier Western countries. While recombinant clotting factor products offer higher purity and safety, they are, like concentrate, extremely expensive, and not generally available in the developing world. In many cases, factor products of any sort are difficult to obtain in developing countries. Clotting factors are either given preventively or on demand. Preventive use involves the infusion of clotting factor on a regular schedule in order to keep clotting levels sufficiently high to prevent spontaneous bleeding episodes. On-demand treatment involves treating bleeding episodes once they arise. In 2007, a trial comparing on-demand treatment of boys with hemophilia A with prophylactic treatment in respect to its effect on the prevention of joint diseases. When the boys reached 6 years of age, 93% of those in the prophylaxis group and 55% of those in the episodic therapy group had a normal index joint structure on MRI. Prophylactic treatment, however, resulted in average costs of $300,000 per year. The author of an editorial published in the same issue of the NEJM supports the idea that prophylactic treatment not only is more effective than on-demand treatment but also suggests that starting after the first serious joint-related hemorrhage may be more cost-effective than waiting until the fixed age to begin.
other. Desmopressin may be used in those with mild hemophilia atronexamic acid or epsilon aminocaproic acid may be given along with clotting factors to prevent breakdown of clots. Pain medicines, steroids, and physical therapy may be used to reduce pain and swelling in an affected joint. Contraindications Prognosis Epidemiology Anticoagulants such as heparin and warfarin are contraindicated for people with hemophilia as these can aggravate clotting difficulties. Also contraindicated are those drugs which have blood thinning side effects. For instance, medicines which contain aspirin, ibuprofen, or naproxen sodium should not be taken because they are well known to have the side effect of prolonged bleeding. Also contraindicated are activities with a high likelihood of trauma, such as motorcycling and skateboarding. Popular sports with very high rates of physical contact and injuries such as American football, hockey, boxing, wrestling, and rugby should be avoided by people with hemophilia. Other active sports like soccer, baseball, and basketball also have a high rate of injuries but have overall less contact and should be undertaken cautiously and only in consultation with a doctor. Like most aspects of the disorder, life expectancy varies with severity and adequate treatment. People with severe hemophilia who don't receive adequate, modern treatment have greatly shortened lifespans and often do not reach maturity. Prior to the 1960s when effective treatment became available, average life expectancy was only 11 years. By the 1980s the lifespan of the average hemophiliac receiving appropriate treatment was 50-60 years. Today with appropriate treatment, males with hemophilia typically have a near normal quality of life with an average lifespan approximately 10 years shorter than an unaffected male. Since the 1980s the primary leading cause of death of people with severe hemophilia has shifted from hemorrhage to HIV slash AIDS acquired through treatment with contaminated blood products. The second leading cause of death related to severe hemophilia complications is intracranial hemorrhage which today accounts for one-third of all deaths of people with hemophilia. Two other major causes of death include hepatitis infections causing cirrhosis and obstruction of air or blood flow due to soft tissue hemorrhage. Hemophilia is rare, with only about one instance in every 10,000 births for hemophilia A and one in 50,000 births for hemophilia B. About 18,000 people in the United States have hemophilia. Each year in the U.S., about 400 babies are born with the disorder. Hemophilia usually occurs in males and less often in females. It is estimated that about 2,500 Canadians have hemophilia A, and about 500 Canadians have hemophilia B. The first medical professional to describe the disease was Abul Cassis. In the 10th century he described families whose males died of bleeding after only minor traumas. While many other such descriptive and practical references to the disease appear throughout historical writings, scientific analysis did not begin until the start of the 19th century. In 1803, John Conrad Otto, a Philadelphian physician, wrote an account about a hemorrhagic disposition existing in certain families in which he called the affected males bleeders. He recognized that the disorder was hereditary and that it affected mostly males and was passed down by healthy females. His paper was the second paper to describe important characteristics of an X-linked genetic disorder. Otto was able to trace the disease back to a woman who settled near Plymouth. NH in 1720. 
the idea that affected males could pass the trait on to their unaffected daughters was not described until 1813 when John F. Hay, published an account in the New England Journal of Medicine. In 1924, a Finnish doctor discovered a hereditary bleeding disorder similar to haemophilia localized in the Åland Islands, southwest of Finland. This bleeding disorder is called von Willebrand disease. The term haemophilia is derived from the term haemorophilia which was used in a description of the condition written by Friedrich Hopf in 1828, while he was a student at the University of Zurich. In 1937, Potek and Taylor, two doctors from Harvard, discovered anti-hemophilic globulin. In 1947, Pavlovsky, a doctor from Buenos Aires, found hemophilia A and hemophilia B to be separate diseases by doing a lab test. This test was done by transferring the blood of one hemophiliac to another hemophiliac. The fact that this corrected the clotting problem showed that there was more than one form of haemophilia. Haemophilia has featured prominently in European royalty and thus is sometimes known as the royal disease. Queen Victoria passed the mutation for haemophilia B to her son Leopold and, through two of her daughters, Alice and Beatrice, to various royals across the continent including the royal families of Spain, Germany, and Russia. In Russia, Tsarevich Alexei, the son and heir of Tsar Nicholas II, famously suffered from haemophilia, which he had gotten from his mother, Empress Alexandra, one of Queen Victoria's granddaughters. The haemophilia of Alexei would result in the rise to prominence of the Russian mystic Grigory Rasputin, at the imperial court. It was claimed that Rasputin was successful at treating Tsarevich Alexei's haemophilia. At the time, a common treatment administered by professional doctors was to use aspirin, which worsened rather than lessened the problem. It is believed that, by simply advising against the medical treatment, Rasputin could bring visible and significant improvement to the condition of Tsarevich Alexei. In Spain, Queen Victoria's youngest daughter, Princess Beatrice, had a daughter Victoria Eugenie of Battenberg, who later became Queen of Spain. Two of her sons were haemophiliacs and both died from minor car accidents. Her eldest son, Prince Alfonso of Spain, Prince of Asturias, died at the age of 31 from internal bleeding after his car hit a telephone booth. Her youngest son, Infante Gonzalo, died at age 19 from abdominal bleeding following a minor car accident in which he and his sister hit a wall while avoiding a cyclist. Neither appeared injured or sought immediate medical care and Gonzalo died two days later from internal bleeding. Up until late 1985 many people with haemophilia received clotting factor products that posed a risk of HIV and hepatitis C infection, the plasma used to create the products was not screened or tested, neither had most of the products been subject to any form of viral inactivation. Tens of thousands worldwide were infected as a result of contaminated factor products including more than 10,000 people in the United States, 3,500 British, 1,400 Japanese, 700 Canadians, 250 Irish, and 115 Iraqis. Infection via the tainted factor products had mostly stopped by 1986 by which time viral inactivation methods had largely been put into place, although some products were shown to still be dangerous in 1987. In those with severe haemophilia, gene therapy may reduce symptoms to those that a mild or moderate person with haemophilia might have. The best results have been found in haemophilia B. 
In 2016 early stage human research was ongoing with a few sites recruiting participants. In 2017 a gene therapy trial on nine people with hemophilia A reported that high doses did better than low doses. It is not currently an accepted treatment for hemophilia. History Scientific Discovery European Royalty Blood Contamination Issues Research Gene Therapy